Pasha Paro, YNS7, thank you for tuning. Got Mike back with us. Call, I'm going to start calling him a system analyst. Mike, <laughs> say hi. Hi. Hi, Pasha. Uh, our third uh, third conversation. Yes, yes. We're we, we going to dig deeper and deeper till we find some some um, kernel of truth, uh, more and more truth. So, um, so so I think uh, I'm very excited always to talk to you. Great. So so we reached the point where we were talking about and I and I really appreciate your investment for the community. Um you know, making sure you make time to come and be here with us. I appreciate that. They appreciate mm -hmm. that. We appreciate that. So we kind of got to the point in the last conversation where we were we were discussing systems that reward clones and or system how systems reward clones and then we got into to make a system truly efficiency you have to get efficient you kind of got to get rid of the human element over time and we reviewed that with the hierarchy of controls and you know the Boeing 7337 right mm -hmm. they they rushed it into production. Supposedly, the hearsay is from accounts. They didn't want to spend the cost of training the pilots, mm -hmm. right? So they retained the ones they had, and they created this new system, right? Mm -hmm. Known as uh, MCAS to mitigate the, like, detect the uh, excessive angles of attack and stuff when the plane was doing its maneuvers and stuff. So the software yep. they put into the system was supposed to help and mm -hmm. it acting erroneously actually led to the crash of the per accounts of the two 737 max flights less than a mm -hmm. month apart. So there's a lot to be learned in that example with what we we're speaking about in an attempt to decrease the human elements, decrease the need for human training and retraining for those that were used to the other design of the 737s, in, a, in an attempt to say the pilots couldn't be capable of piloting the plane, they imp implemented software to take control of it for them and do this stuff. Kind of like cars on the road today, drive for you, stuff like that, yeah. operate the automobile for you. And it created this, this massive catastrophe. Mm -hmm. How uh, does that I, compare to our everyday life? I I didn't know anything about that, but it is a, a very, and it's a, it's a beautiful thing because that you told that story because Every system has that story. Every system existing has that story. System cannot fulfill their promises. Me, I fulfill my promise. I, You trust me that I show up, I show up. Humans can fulfill a, a promise. Systems can't. Because systems, by the function of how they are constructed based on a, on a financial principle, all of the things that you described, were about cost cutting. Because if it wasn't for cost, let's say everybody had had all the money they needed, then people wouldn't care if, hey, Pasha, Michael, come on, let's do a training. It doesn't matter how long it takes. It, we will let you loose on people, on other people, or on a new vehicle, on new technical innovation, when we are trained efficiently and when we can guarantee through the system that the people are safe because the people created the system. And systems, because, I mean, you know, we, I think we have said that if you pay me $10 on a credit card, four people make money on it. Because what the financial basis, I'm not against finances. I'm saying the financial principle is a human created system that underlays all other systems. And by and that is the core of problems because human created systems inevitably, because they, they are very limited, 
create imbalance, meaning the rich get richer, the poor get poorer. It's just where, where it goes. Where can I get more money? You can't play Monopoly if you don't have money in the if you don't have play money first. So people are incapable of creating uh, a wealth if they if they have no money to 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 uh, invest or to assets that the bank can have a hold on it to give you money that you then use for investing or create a business or whatever. You cannot go from zero to making money. So you have to have it inherited uh, from your family, from whatever. You have to have it. You have to have money. And it's very few people that literally have nothing and made it. I'm, you know, and... I've talked to bankers that are very high up in the in the in the uh, in the what what do you call it in the hierarchy uh, hierarchy exactly in the hierarchy that that told me literally every single person that makes it big is kind of dirty has has done some dirty thing that means not meaning that the people are dirty all. But they have done illegal stuff, you know, not paying the taxes, uh, you know, putting a product on the on the on the on the market that isn't uh, valuable, that isn't safe, and it just got away with it. And it, those that got away with it, but he says there's just nobody that just came in and just put money in, and then yeah, then you're an average person, then you're an average uh, entrepreneur. But the big guys always had to do stuff here and then that wasn't really legal. That was nepotism. That was manipulation. And you know that systems reward that. You know, systems reward that because as long as you make money, it doesn't matter how you make the money. If the system gets supported, because it's based on it. It's not a conscious thing. It's not, oh, the people want to be all really crooked and whatever. It's just... That's how systems work. And you can't say when you don't, when you cannot generate enough money to invest in the money market or the money system, you can't make money on money. And that's, so, you know, so, yeah. So, so the financial system is kind of like a conglomerate of multiple system types. You got the fabricated exactly. engineering aspect, yeah. you got the hybridness. Because yeah. the, the fabricated engineering physical system mm -hmm. is like the man-made artifacts, right? Yeah. For the people, for those that are learning with us. So hybrid systems that are the ones that combine the physical and nature. So yeah, it's natural for a family to want to provide for itself. It's Absolutely. natural for a community and a village to want to be sustainable. So that's going to be the, I'm looking at that as like your natural pursuit of happiness in life is exactly. combined now with you know the 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 fabricated system um of exchange and monetary worth and value then you got that leads into the design conceptual systems which is theories philosophies yeah. and yeah. then lastly the human activity system when you put a cost on everything it costs you to to go to work it costs you not to work it costs you to have this it costs you not to have yeah. that so it's really a a, a great uh smoke and mirrors um Mm -hmm. um way to you know the hierarchy of control effect so here's my question for you now with regards to the regards to the financial system you know um it re you spoke about how the cost cutting and the training and all that stuff are like oxymoronic right mm -hmm. so you you have the best people when they can take their time to become the best when people are entering into re-entering into in this case let's say it's 20 going into 2023 people are re-entering into the workplace it's a big scramble for like you said profits and not so much on investing in the training so it reduces growth opportunities and positions because people don't feel comfortable long enough to feel like they want to stay that puts stress on the whole system in itself of people trying to work for a company or corporation is there, you know, 
hold times when you call in for customer service went from 60 seconds to 60 minutes yeah. and the companies are okay with that. Is there any yeah. question why the economy is in a state, uh, the current state that it's in where they're claiming, you know, there's not, there's not good help out there when they've pushed the system this far to the max. I, th I think that's just a, a symptom of the basic of every system because even religion, every system that we created, humans created that, I'm not talking nature. I'm talking what humans created. Every system is based on financial principles. And because it's based on financial principles, it has to get more and better and faster and cheaper all the time. Guess on what, where it's going to take that. It takes that from humans. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so if I have to be cheaper, my product has to be cheaper. My service has to be cheaper. My service has to be better. My service has to be bigger than others then I have to, uh, then, uh, you know, the first obvious thing, because it is one of the most expensive is your labor. And I have to cut labor, either giving you less money or requesting more work for the same amount of money. And, and then you see that it's just, it's just, I mean, we have food costs that were, you know, rose on average 13% since COVID. Uh, who is going to pay that? Uh, when the economy expanded, and this is what I think, the labor didn't expand. So the the average price of, and I'm not against, I'm not, uh, you know, criticizing anything. I'm just saying, you got to be aware and see this. Our average salary should be 23 to $25 an hour. If you go by how much the money the, the economy made. So if we go parallel to what the labor is worth for, uh, and then rises and the uh, companies rise at the same time and the, and the labor rises at the same time, we should have today 23 to $25 uh, uh, an average salary uh, per hour. as so a minimum wage, that's the minimum wage, but we don't have that. So the whole... I think the whole phase we are entering right now is hopefully we're realizing that the most valuable on this planet is human humans and nature. I hope we enter this and our limitlessness to solve any problem and not seeing it. Only through if you look through the system, then you say, oh my God, we can well, we're gonna get more money. But that's not the problem. That's a system thinking. How can we, with what we have, either redistribute in a way that is fair? Because remember, I said before, in nature, everything is worthy one because it exists, right? Mm -hmm. And you can have that, but you can, but also in our monopoly game, if somebody is good at that, if somebody is like Elon Musk or, or thing, he has the right to be successful in the monopoly game. But that doesn't give him more human value. He's still as much worth as the beggar on Fifth Avenue, which are our last uh, example, right? So once you get that, with that information, we should be able to create a system uh, that is actually human adapt, not this, not human system adapt. We can change the systems. We are so limitless humans. We, have, we are so creative. Uh, we can create, we can alter systems and the base of what it is to be human to, uh, to a solution where people can survive and have shelter and at the same time can play the system if they want to and try them themselves out. I mean, I, this is what my feeling, just from my feeling, and I'm not right, I'm not an expert, I'm, you know, I have no education, I'm, you know, auto, I'm neurodiverse, I'm dyslexic and describe. So my feeling is creating a system that has basically two systems. One is human adapt is human centric. And the other one is monopoly, what we're playing now. But it is not monopoly where all the humans experience their humanity through a monopoly game. It's like 
and, and saying this is the world. I mean, you can have the most perfect player in Monopoly doesn't mean that he does anything for growing our human potential. What we do here right now, we, we, we expand our human potential. We say, hey, let's look at our situation right now that we, we're using our brain, our mind, our feelings and say, oh, I see this doesn't work. So how can it work? And the only thing that I can come up with that we will make out of the two kind of systems, one system that is mandatory, that is human adapt, meaning it works nothing other than getting humans to exist and have shelter. So if you're sick, if you're whatever, if you don't want to work for a year, you don't have to work for a year. And But you don't have enough money that, that you buy huge houses or mansion or, 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 or thing. It's just a basic. And it's up to you if you want to be okay with the basic. And then you can enter the, 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 the system that we have right now, the monopoly game, and try your hands on, you know, bring in a new product, be creative, uh, try your best. And I think um, that would be way better. Sounds sounds like in some regards that those systems, those various elements of system are in existence, current state, under the one system that has yeah. its corruption and its failures. So when you look at like some of the, the lawful stuff, even it's still, sh it, it even has that divide where you apply this language and you're in that monopoly game. You apply this language and you are in that, that human existence realm. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what history shows is a common thread in the collapse um, of good government, so to speak, right, mm -hmm. was leaders who undermined and broke from upholding core societal principles, morals, and ideals. Mm -hmm. So they call that like social contracts. When you start to infringe and manipulate social contracts, that's when things start to get really bad and fall apart at the seams. Mm -hmm. So now those are agreements among members of society, you know, to, for the better of the, the village, right? The, the yeah. now look at where we are. And like you said, the financial system puts you in a position where the next Picasso may not ever become Picasso because he's too worried about keeping electric on and food on. Mm -hmm. Would you consider that a blatant attempt to control social contracts? No, I, I don't think I, I don't think people are conscious. I think people I think everything is a everything is a symbol. By, by the ones putting the system in place, though, would you consider knowing knowing they probably thought it all out and said this is the position people are going to be in majority, like you said? Yeah. Right. Because unless you do something extravagant, break the mold, you like you say, you don't get elevated to having a, be able to afford your time every day to do what you want, to wake up and just do what you want to do. You don't get to live in where you want to live. You you live yep. where you settle to live. You know what I'm saying? What, whatever that might mm -hmm. be in some cases. So stuff like that. Do you feel like the implementation of the system was purposely done to undermine social contracts, especially looking at the last title of the last thing where they social distancing? Is there an attack on social contracts to control people, do you think? I think I think that's a again a symptom of uh, that you always have a lack because the financial system creates a lack always. If it is not a lack of needs, it's 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 a lack ch generator. So why would it be? I say greedy. What is greed? I def redefined greed. Greed is when you're not believing that the success you had. What well, you can replicate. So it, let's say somebody is rich and all of a sudden he gets greedy. The reason is because he has the fear of the lack that he cannot repeat the success that he previously had. 
That's why people want to hold on to it. And you know, when you want to hold on to a love, to anything, you're going to lose it. So it's a self-fulfilling prophecy of lack. So the whole financial system is built of, 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 of a lack. And so I think all this, people are benevolent in general. But if the fear of losing the, your existence, you, because today working is not to live like it was for our grandparents, mm -hmm. working is to survive. So you have to work to survive. It's not like you 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 get a two car garage, you have savings, you can't take a vacation for two weeks or something. Today your vacation is two days, okay? So that's it, a longer weekend. That's what you did, and we gotta be aware of that. And we we and I think why people hide behind system is also because of fear. Uh, uh, it's it's like it's like hey, I could never do anything else, but I got elected to that position. And I got to take, make the best out of it. And the best out of it means I got to take care of my people. I got to take care of my family. I got to take care of my buddies that helped me get that position. And, and, and it's so, so we all are reactive. We are not proactive. We are reactive to a situation that we have for generation created. And now we're just living the shit out. And that, and, and, and it's just, so I am not against anything. I'm not, you know, saying, oh my God, that was, and it might be, Pasha, you might be 100% right that it might be with a bad intent, but I think that the bad intent is fed by fear, by, by that lack of, of, you know, I can't survive. So what am I going to do when I'm 65? You know, am I going to, you know, uh, social security pays me seven, 700 bucks every two week, uh, weeks. I cannot live of that in America, you know? So I got to do some shenanigans, you know, uh, or something, and we are very creative that we come to our creativity, right? To manipulate either the system to hide behind it, you know, I get a position where I can take money under the table or I can cheat those people or I can, or I can, uh, I mean, nobody gives in. I, I've never seen anybody that doesn't have the chance and doesn't grab it. And the more the stress comes for survival, the more you grab any possibilities that you can put some money on the side, you know, or further your position. And it becomes all about the winning the Monopoly game, not playing a game that is fun where we can expand and learn and and grow and 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 handle it on the other on another level, not with manipulation and sacrifice and you know and stealing and doing shenanigans. So I I like I like what you're saying there. And I want to add that I wasn't confirming right malicious intent. Yeah. I like no. to always view the whole infinity. So yeah. I wanted to get your input on that because the next question I have for you is what consideration do we have that what percentage of, of our current situation in, in humanity or society is part user error? Now, when I when I say that, what I mean is think about a, a UI uh, or a UX, a user interface or a user yep. uh, inter experience, right? Yep. So we're supposed to be tuned in because we were talking about um, um, we're supposed to be tuned in. But if we're tuned into the design systems, would that be user error when it comes to the natural systems? because we've we've given our focus over to the to the design system and then we're wondering why there's such an imbalance created what percentage do you think is due to user error like you made a good point earlier um about not being able to afford the time i'm going to say afford i know you didn't say it like that but i'm going to say it like that mm. because mm. i've i've done some posts and some conversations about yeah. the we know the quote, the wealthy can afford time. Mm -hmm. So when you put out a painting, when Pasha puts out a song, there's so much saturation in the market and then so lack of time available for the people's mm -hmm. consideration that they don't get to maybe all, always explore it, right? 
It doesn't matter how much money you have. You, you, you uh, currently what pivoted was in that system again that says create more, better, uh, faster, cheaper. Everybody creates like a, a maniac, and we are so perfect. All humans are so perfect in adapting. So we adapted to the system. We just keep creating. Now, what does marketing says? Uh, uh, marketing say uh, says yes. Uh, you give away your book, Pasha, or your music to lure them in to hire you as a producer or a music uh, musician. You give away your book that you wrote. You give away your thing. I don't have the time to read your book. I don't have the time to listen to my own podcasts. So. What had happened is we have so much product that it pivoted that it's not money that is that is the the the, 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 the currency. It's time. We don't have the time anymore. And look at all the, I mean, when I have uh, 1,500, 4,000 clicks on, on YouTube and I have not a, a single comment and we're not talking about, I mean, our, you know, what I talk on other about is also not as deep as here, but what I talk about is not a boring thing. It's not something, hey, there's, I'm just talking about vote for Trump or vote for Biden. I I talk outside of the system that somebody would think like you did, you know, hey, this is great or this is not great. And, and I want to talk about this. And I have no feedback. And that tells me... Uh, after 110 interviews that that we are living living in a delusion that people and we love to have that hope that somebody will discover us and will buy our music and our paintings and we love that and and i think that there is no time it's logically if when you go on the logic level there is no time that people can find you that people can actually read your free stuff that you give them for free. I mean, how many newsletters you get for free? How many eBooks you get for free? You don't have the time to look at that even. You can't give the person a chance that gives you a present. And how, you know, and then you can't, you can't, even if you're at the money, you don't have the time. So now I'm buying an online course from you, Pasha, okay? So I'm, I actually had the time to see you, to listen to music and to, you know, now I, and I don't have the time and to buy a course from you. Let's say I'm buying a course that is just a webinar for whatever that you sell for $300. I said, okay, I buy it. And you give me a coupon, it's 150 and I'm going to watch that course. I don't have the time to watch that course. Unless I think you are the one thing that can save my ass but mm -hmm. I don't have the time to watch that course. And, you know, the courses they offer are not like a half an hour. The, the courses that is like a six time course for whatever. And then, and they give you so much for, you know, that, that you, you have the illusion, you get so much value, you know? Wow. And you, and, and you have like, you have a, okay, this is a six part course. I mean, Tony Robbins, all these people, you're buying a course. You you get everything the guy ever created. The guy creates since he's alive, you know. Mm -hmm. And he gives you all the old ones for free to, to lure you in to get that sales funnel. And you have no time to watch those. And then you say, okay, he's good, and you feel like kind of guilty. He gave you so much, and you buy this stuff because he gives you a coupon half off. And you can't that you can't you you can't consume it. So consuming is not the the thing. Time is the is the uh, relevance, and if time becomes the relevance, and people all the humanity gets conscious of that, then people will get the right amount of money. Because if I can save time for you doing something for me, you composing the music for me, then I will pay you accordingly. Yeah. If we eliminate, if we were able, we got. Uh... Little, about nine minutes left here. Yep. If we were to eliminate the money or the, the currency, right? Yeah. The financial system, the way it is. Yeah. It would give people back their time. 
And then the natural system is people would invest their time in what they truly were interested in. So now the people that wanted to make shoes would make shoes instead of being a telemarketer or a collection salesman. Yeah. The person that wanted to build a new motor that, you know, mm -hmm. whatever would do that instead of selling cars, you know? Mm -hmm. So what type of shift do you think would happen on human consciousness and the quality of life without the monetary system? I don't think the monetary system can ever be extinguished because we have to have a tool to exchange goods. You know, that that's, but, but I, I'm totally on what you say. I mean, you are hundred percent correct. And I think it's first the awareness. And as you see what you responded to me and, and I didn't say that you said, okay, this happens, this happens. And I totally agree. It totally resonates with me. And that happens from being conscious from having a discourse talking to each other and that's why i say discourse is the second superpower after creativity you know mm -hmm. and adaptability is the third superpower so once we talk and once you're conscious the the, the, the solution you need to trust your human limitlessness you cannot say okay give me solutions you, you the, the solution that will come but if you're not the, the solutions is very interesting with awareness. Once you're aware, the solution comes automatically. So once they gave cigarettes to women in maternity wards, and then once they realized, okay, that's totally crazy. That's insanity, you know? They didn't need to make a, a, a law to forbid cigarettes. They just stopped giving cigarettes to pregnant women. You know what I mean? Nathan. So once you once you are conscious the change goes you don't need to make more laws or whatever because the people are conscious and i mean once you're conscious is about human and not about gender race or sexuality you don't need to make a law oh my god this is yeah you can get all of this stuff with race gender and sexuality out who cares it's only system relevant it's not for humans right. relevant right when you look at elements of the constitution it totally supports what you're saying yeah. when yeah. you look at you know the pursuit of happiness so mm -hmm. if there was no cost no monetary cost for things which is where we're racing to in the world of potential everything could become automated right because it's going to yeah. break everything down to a zero cost then we'll get into the conversation universal basic income etc yeah. because there's no work but what the point is is if everything costs nothing then a person that wanted to manufacture whatever product could actually order enough inventory or stop to make that to their heart content. And then if they wanted to just change their mind and go a different direction, they could do that at that time. The way the system is set up now, like you said, it's forcing for the efficiency of profit to bring down overhead while increasing uh, sales and, and profit really, which is counterproductive to humanity, right? And nature. Mm -hmm. But that's the difference in itself of someone saying, hey, we made this car. It took us five years to make it, this one car, but it's going to last for 100 years versus exactly. the, today's model where buy this car, throw it away in 10 years, get a new one. I mean, the, 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 the whole Tesla thing is that, right? Yeah. They say that the, 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 yeah. the batteries last. So we haven't experienced that humanity. We, we, we see the success of selling. Mm hmm we don't see the problem that arises after i don't know eight years is that there after eight years i don't know what the, the time is but when that time comes that the batteries go out what where where is it going to be this post where is it going to be exchanged what how much does it cost and mm -hmm. how relevant is it so so we, we this short time success is where we all jubilee and say oh my god pasha made a new car it's the greatest thing ever you know and then that car is really a burden on society, on our planet, on everything. And, and, and so this, this short time jolts of ego, oh my God, we had all that, you know? Uh, yeah. uh, we can't live on that. We need to live on saying, oh my God, we create a human potential. We have the potential to create a car that runs on water. You know that. Yeah. Yeah. 
twice, uh, a, twice invented since the fifties. Yeah, uh, well, it, I bet Probably. it is way more invented than the fifties than twice. We just know about two, so mm -hmm. we can great. But it isn't a business. Water is not a business. Gas is a business. Everybody makes money with with gas, and that's what the sad thing is. Everything is dependent on money. You can't live anymore. Uh, you can't experience humanity anymore without mm -hmm. money. And I, I'm okay with that, but it can't be the, the motivator and driver for everything. And that's yeah. where the problems come because it's a motivator and driver for everything. I agree with that. And I really want to get in the background world. I think a few of us in our own way is working on a way to get us back to the point where we actually can have and own have ownership of the pursuit of happiness. Yes. This, the way yes. the system is set up has derailed us from that ability. It's yeah. like you said, all these systems are in place, gatekeepers in the system, levels to the system, yeah. access required, you know what I mean? All kinds of yeah. Hoop, yeah. hurdles, all kinds of stuff. So definitely takes away a lot of life of, of living and you're yeah. just putting, it forces you into the system. The system has to eat, yeah. like you said, it has to survive. Yeah. So it feeds off humanity. Yeah. It's a it's a parasite, it seems like, huh? Yeah, yeah, it's a parasite that we created and we're blind that on the other side of systems are also humans. So so we need to see, say, hey, we, we all humans need to get together, be conscious. And it says, okay, let's see, so what can we do? But first you have to be aware, like you and I, we become aware by talking to each other and say, okay, this, and doesn't life come easier once you're aware of it? Because you all of a sudden, okay, you can compartmentalize. Oh, this is just system shit versus it's more important. The priority is that I'm friends with you, not, oh, in the system, right. I need to have distance because you are a different color than me. You're a different person than me, whatever. And, and it's just system make us not being fulfilled. And fulfillment is abundance. When you go, you love your, your words, right? The, it's a feeling of fulfillment mm -hmm. that we can't have because we are always hooked to plugged into lack and that's the financial system i like the way you describe that 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 breeds lack because it scarcity drives up the value in, yeah. in everything so i really appreciate you having an abundance of time for us i look to continue this more yeah um minute to go here give us your closing thoughts on this element of it the failures of the system when there's an imbalance in humanity and system the, the the system would be if the system wasn't based and the survival of the system wasn't based on financial principles uh we wouldn't have the problems that we have but because i mean religion is a good thing it's not a bad thing and we but religions cannot be uh, effective because they basically have to make sure that the bottom line is correct Hmm. And that's that's the best example because religions are you know they help each other and, and and social, but they can't really be that. Even the religions cannot be that what they're supposed to be, because they run out of money. Seems what it is, and the, and the irony is that the HJR one eighty two the government took all the money out of circulation back in the thirties. So we never we most many of us never had any money in our lifetimes. Yeah. So Pasha Paro, why that seven? Got Michael. Be sure to check out his links in the description below. Thank you for tuning. Thank you, Pasha.